Nikoga's armor plate, the chest plate, for his um, armor parts. So we've got a 5 millimeter EVA foam from Hobby Lobby. I don't use these, they usually just wig it, but uh, for this person, I'm going to have to make it to exact measurements, which usually all my costumes are exact measurements, but without patterns. So um, they're basically a small, and I'm making this costume for them. And I want it to sit like here and then wrap around them, so they're clearly a lot smaller than me. So I'm making that. I've got my pattern already started. Alrighty guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So right here we have a 5mm EVA foam in white um, and the pattern that I have made for this person's exact measurements. So we're going to basically trace it on twice but a flipped image of each other so we're going to mirror it and then we're going to cut it out with a box cutter or an exacto blade but i'm using a box cutter please make sure you are safe please make sure your box cutter is very sharp and by checking that with a piece of paper but also if you're a child doing this please make sure you have an adult with you to help you so right here i'm tracing everything out and I'm flipping it and I will be doing the same thing on the other side doing a whole mirror image and I'm going to cut it out with my box cutter Right here I'm using a straight up and down angle. I'm not tilting it in any way. I'm just trying to take it slow and cut through. My blade is very, very sharp. So uh, just one fill swoop is awesome. And I'm just cleaning up a little bit of details before I have to sand everything. Um, sorry, I am a little sick and my voice is coming in and out. And this is why I haven't uploaded this last week. So we will be doing basically the same thing on the black EVA foam and it's also 5mm. You don't have to buy two different colors, but they only had the two different colors sadly. Um, so I had enough. So it is 5mm and I am cutting out a smaller version of the bigger pattern that we just used on the white EVA foam. We're going to just make this one smaller we're going to overlap them and the black one is just going to lay on top of the white one and here in a minute i'm about to sand everything but i'm just going to show you what it looks like right now after i trace the lines on it to make sure where it goes when we go to apply the contact cement so i'm just like tracing all the way around so i know where to place the contact cement so i can make sure it goes right exactly where i need it to be I have half an inch all the way around to a half a, like a little less than half an inch. Now I'm sanding this with my Dremel and I would recommend wearing a mask and some eye protection and possibly do this in a very well um, filtered area because I did not. Right here I am putting contact cement. Try to your try to do your best to like smear it around to make it even but you have to apply contact cement to both pieces of foam the, the back sides well this one of course the front side and the other one the back side and right here you can see where I messed up and I put way too much in one spot and it's dripping down <laughs> 
the side and it really upset me so I had to get some water I had to wipe it off before it dried it's easy to wipe off when it's wet or when it's uh, dried too with like a damp rag but it's it's period because it got all over the backside and you have to work with contact cement with a face mask some eye protection and also please make sure you're wearing gloves because I did not also, I wasn't touching the cement with my hands, so that made it a little bit easier. But yeah, I already applied everything, let it dry, and then I am applying it now to each other. So I'm pressing them together, putting a lot of weight, and I accidentally got contact cement on top of the foam. So once again, water and a rag will wipe that right off. No big deal. Just get it cleaned off a little bit before you put the clear coat. So I found this stuff that I've been using a lot lately because in my area we do not have the can of um, Plasky Dip. You have to order it online. It's very hard to get a hold of around here. So I found Mod Podge Clear Coat and Primer Spray. I didn't even know that was a thing and it works really well it's like super flexible so I did like three coats of that before I'm going to paint this on I asked if they wanted me to do the airbrush or the spray paint and they said they'd rather me do this because it looks more detailed it makes it look more um, textured so I was like okay I could do that so I'm right now using acrylic light gray and um, I did three coats of that and then I did one more coat just in case because there was a slight toe difference in one spot on the other one. So I did four coats in total of the gray. And then I did three coats of the white on the entire edge. Um, I did add some white on the inside to just blend it all out. So I'm gonna stop talking here so you can watch me paint this. <laughs> right here um, this is where I'm applying the white I did like three coats all the way around and then I realized I needed to do the fourth coat in gray you'll see here in a minute you're gonna see where my hand goes uh, my left hand and you'll see the tone difference and I don't know why there was a problem with that for some reason I was just struggling with it but the fourth coat definitely fixed the problem um, the white is white acrylic um, and I just did four coats of that and then I'm going to do like a clear coat and then we'll add all the other details. This was like the hardest part for me and the one that was the most tedious actually because trying to be neat without tape on the edges and I tried taping it and those edges are so small that the tape just was not having it so I was just like I'm gonna try to freehand it it was so scary trying not to get white on the edge where the gray is that was so scary but I did white on the edges and then I did it on the sides and the back side so it was all one consistent color
So right here, I scored lines into the backside of the armor. I took three inch nylon webbing. Um, I like I, I took three inches long, cut it, heated up both ends, and then I went and put a snap on it and now I'm hot gluing it down and I made sure I hot glued the edges down and I'm using ice water to tap the edges down to make it really nice and neat and let it cool faster but also be very pliable with your fingers and you're not burning yourself so I'm like dunking my hand in ice water right here just to tap it down and put down the edges I'm sorry I didn't record the process of the nylon webbing and the snap I forgot to, <laughs> not gonna lie, but I made sure I measured and scored out everything and then hot glued everything. And I used quick cooling hot glue, I didn't even know that was a thing, um, but I, I wanted to try it out and it turns out I like it a lot. That was just really hot though, I did burn myself at some point. So, I'm not gonna lie, I just realized I did not record the process of me putting the three coats of Mod Podge spray after I was done painting in this video. Um, I think I lost that footage somewhere. I, I'm not, not too happy about that. But right here, <laughs> we're gonna do this now. I am punching holes and I'm going to put a bunch of eyelets in. And right here, I'm just trying to make sure that everything goes through. I didn't have to hit it with a hammer, I just like shh, twisted the leather hole poker thing. And I was just twisting it and making holes for the eyelets. Um, turns out this leather thing was not the correct size, so I had to go in with a exacto knife to make the holes a little bit bigger but I ended up getting half an inch or one fourth size I don't remember of eyelets and I only could get those from Walmart for some reason I went to Joann's I went to Hobby Lobby I went to a lot of places but the only place that carried them was Walmart And now I'm just hitting them in with the tool, actually. Um, I'm just making sure that they're setting right. I did mess up like three or four times, so I had to take pliers and like separate it. Um, right here, I'm not using the correct st string. I'm just checking it to make sure it fits. I did end up using something similar to shoelaces. Um, so I'm just lacing it up. And I did the other side off camera because I wanted to show what I was doing with the first one, which was basically the same thing because they're the same size on both sides. Um, so we're just going to lace them up and then tighten them up and see how they sit. And this is what it looks like all tied up. Also, with it all snapped on to the chest plate. So right here, I'm putting really, really, really tiny eyelets in. Yeah, they're really tiny. And I didn't know they made them this small. I was like, I need to find a way to add the shoulder pieces, which are there for show. They're not there to actually hold the costume up. That's why I did the leather um, chest and shirt plate thing, like the whole leather garment underneath in the first video, because when you put that on and you tighten it, it will be tight enough to hold everything into place. It's not even going to move. Uh, so the shoulder straps are just for show and 
this is what they look like uh, the next video you'll get to see me make the shoulder straps I did shorten the front dangly pieces those were permanently at that length I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Um, so this is the end of the video. There will be another one and one after that. The next video is going to be about the shoulder pieces and the fur for the rest of it. And then we're going to do a separate video about the wig and hopefully I fix all the problems that I've been having with my camera when I go to style the wig for this cosplay. I'm super excited to start styling on that. The wig will be here on Monday. So hopefully... I can get that started and um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them below. If you want to know any more details, let me know if you have any questions about anything. Leave a like if you like the video and subscribe. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye guys!